Hi, Element 14 community. My name is Peter. And I'm Philip. And we're making underwater drones. Let's get started. We started about four years ago. We were 16 at the time and we thought to ourselves, let's 3D print an underwater drone. So we are quite deep into this now and uh, let's take a closer look at one of these. So along our journey, we've made about 14 significant prototypes and we've start, started basically from scratch and ended up right here. This is the CPS-5. We'll show you how it swims at the end of the video, but right now I want to explain all of the major components that this drone is made of. So uh, as you can see, all of the green parts are actually 3D printed. So this is the entirety of the shell. And also what is 3D printed are these propellers for the five motors. These three motors make the drone stabilize, so it doesn't turn randomly in the water. And these two motors are the main ones that propel, propel this drone forwards and backwards. And they're slightly more powerful. At the front of the drone, you can see a camera right here. This is the lens of the camera. This is just a random USB camera. And, and on both uh, sides of this camera are two LEDs, 5 watt LEDs, that provide the light needed during the dark nights under the water. At the back of the drone, you can see uh, the main plug here. And this plug is used to communicate with uh, the computer that is on the shore. So uh, let me take the tether. Here is the tether. Uh, this is just an uh, Ethernet cable. Let me plug in the tether. So here you might heard uh, the sound this is just the confirmation that the uh, drone turned on let me actually unplug it for now and now let me show you how this drone uh, works from the inside for that i would need just a two and a half millimeter hex this or or just this so let's go So now you might see that inside the drone, there's a large acrylic pipe in the middle. Uh, this pipe holds all of the electronics inside and is sealed on both ends with these end caps. So as you might know, 3D prints themselves are not watertight, uh, at least not the FDM, FDM uh, prints like ours. By the way, this is PLA filament. Uh, so we use the, those, these end caps. They are also 3D printed, but we uh, pour epoxy into them so that everything is sealed. We tried to make 3D prints watertight for over two years and we tested that extensively and it's just not possible. So uh, these two end caps uh, hold the electronics inside. This specific one is also a quite complicated one because the cables need to go through uh, from the inside to the outside and how it's done is also a whole different and long story. As you also can see on both sides of this uh, pipe, main pipe, uh, this is a buoyancy foam. So uh, this drone cannot sink or float in the water. The way that the drone travels up or down is by these three motors. They provide thrust so it can go up or down. And uh, the drone needs to be neutrally buoyant. Without this buoyancy foam, the drone sinks. Therefore, we need to add some for it to be neutrally buoyant. When it comes to the buoyancy on the bottom side of the drone, uh, there's a space for a module. Actually, you can uh, screw in whatever module you want, for example, a module for a, an additional camera. But what we use it for um, also is uh, the buoyancy in the salt water. As you might know, salt water is slightly denser, therefore uh, the drone will uh, float a bit. Therefore, we add another type of module. This is just a heavier one. We uh, unscrew this and screw this in. 
so that it's also nutrient buoyant in the salt water. In order to know your exact depth in the water, we also have a, a pressure sensor under this buoyancy foam here, so let me unscrew it. And under here, there are some cables, and under here is also a pressure sensor, which senses the uh, pressure of the water, therefore the depth. With each 10 meters underwater, the pressure goes up uh, one bar, or one atmosphere. Now let's take a look at the electronics itself, so inside this main pipe. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! Thanks very much, Philip, for separating the electronics from the shell for me. So first of all, as you could probably tell, these electronics are made to be modular, meaning that we do not use basically any custom printed circuit boards. We try to make it work with off-the-shelf parts so that anyone, once again, can modify it to their needs by adding, for example, their own printed PCB or, for example, just by ordering new parts. So the electronics themselves are divided into two parts. This part is like a power part and this part is a logic part. Let's talk about the power part first. So here we have the batteries connected in a 3S2P configuration and they can provide at least 40 amps of current when the drone needs it. This makes the drone last for about an hour on a full charge, depending on the speed obviously, because if you full bean it, then it will last for 20 minutes probably, or less. And here, there are all of the five ESCs which enable the drone to control its motor. So basically, the ESCs are connected to the battery and then the uh, ESCs themselves can steer all of the motors which are the part of the CPS-5. These ESCs get their input signal from this Pixhawk flight controller over here. It's coming through these wires. And the Pixhawk flight controller is basically a flight controller which allows you to do all of the stuff that drones do. So basically control, uh, for example, the ESCs. Uh, because the Pixhawk has, for example, a built-in uh, IMU or inertial measurement unit, the drone can self-level and the Pixhawk gives the ESCs all of the instructions on how to do that. Below the Pixhawk, there is a Raspberry Pi computer. This Raspberry Pi is also a very crucial part of the drone because it does a couple of uh, very useful things. So first of all, it allows the surface computer to communicate with the actual Pixhawk. It's like an interface. Then the Raspberry Pi has also a camera connected to it through its USB port that allow it to record and stream the video live to the surface computer as well. Okay, so that's basically what Raspberry Pi does. And one important thing about the logic part of the electronics is that the Raspberry Pi and the Pixhawk actually both run on open source software, meaning that you can basically download it, modify it to your needs, to, for example, include a custom module or anything, and then basically upload the software to the Pixhawk or the, or the Raspberry Pi and have your drone work differently than before. And then on the bottom, there is also a couple of minor circuits uh, that are pretty useful uh, when it comes to the actual drone. So uh, this over here, as you can see, is just a power MOSFET, which allows the drone to turn on when we plug in the tether, actually. Uh, this is a fuse, which is connected to the uh, actual MOSFET, so that, uh, you know, for safety. Uh, and then there are two LED drivers over here, and these drivers control the main lights, uh, which are the parts of the CPS drone. So. This is basically the entire electronics. Now I think it would be pretty logical for me to show you how the drone swims, but I sort of actually Philip disassembled it for me 
and uh, yeah, this won't swim without reassembling it. But I got a surprise for you. We have another drone. This one is actually red. So let's go for a swim with this drone. <laughs> all right, all right. So let's see this. First of all, our drone can turn on the lights and then it can move forwards and backwards, spinning propellers the other way. It can move also up and down like so. It can spin to the right and to the left. It can also change its roll to the right and to the left like so at the top of the screen. It can also change its pitch or in this case make a loop. Uh, and in this situation right here, we want to pick up a weight from the bottom of the pool and Peter successfully did it. We have 3D printed a hook module for, for the weights and um, right now I'm also in the pool trying to receive the weights and in a second I should grab it like so and it was a successful delivery. <laughs> there is one more thing. You can build this drone yourself with our DIY course. Go to our webpage for more information and sign up to our newsletter. In this course, you will learn everything from scratch, building along with us, assembling the entirety of the electronics, the motors, the camera, everything. Thanks for the invite to Element 14 Presents. Also, be sure to check out our YouTube channel, where we do even more cool stuff with underwater drones. Cheers and see ya!